What up, what up, Tile friends? Welcome back to another Hump Day Financials brought to you by Performance Financial LLC. I'm sitting down with my man, Drake. How are you, Drake? Dude, living my best life, living the dream over here. I love it. I love it. So this is the fourth fourth part of a four-part series. And if you didn't catch the, the first three parts, you'll definitely want to check them out. The first one, we, we went over the balance sheet, you know, and, and kind of went over an overview of how to read that and kind of different things that you need to know on your balance sheet. Week two, we went over profit loss, sometimes called an income statement. Um, and then week three was, of course, the cash flow statement, which was something that I had not heard of. And then this week, we're going to kind of wrap it all up and show you, you know, the importance and have just a little discussion on evaluating and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Last week, we kind of wrapped up the call with the idea that I don't care what size you are. These are things you need to be looking at inside of your business. These are we're trying to get away from the idea of, hey, we're just we got cash in the bank. We're good to go. Um, that mentality is what kills small businesses. Right. It's the. We need to be evaluating where we're at. We need to be understanding what our numbers are telling us so that we can make really good decisions. The, the thing I always tell everybody, Luke, is uh, think about when you were an employee and you sit down in your boss's office uh, for your annual review and your boss kind of sits and looks at you across the table and he goes, man, you were really screwing up nine months ago. And then you kept doing it for the rest of the year. You go, what? You go well, why didn't you tell me nine months ago that I was screwing up? I would have fixed it and then moved forward. Yeah. That's exactly what evaluation in your business does, right? If you had a quarterly review with your boss and he's telling you you screwed up, you know, a month ago, well, you'd fix it, right? That's the same thing in your financials. So I hear guys all the time come to me and they go, man, we really suck this year because they just come for their tax return. And I go, well, yeah, you never looked at your numbers and you didn't know why back in June you lost a bunch of money, right? It's because you didn't take the time to evaluate what you're actually doing. So- Today, we're going to kind of wrap up this whole series a little bit and kind of help tie these together, but also just give some pointed uh, advice as to what does that process even look like, right? Some of you might be going, well, Drake, you're telling me to review them. Dude, first of all, I don't even have them. So how, what, am I, what can I review? Right. right? right. Um, so first off, let's just start at the absolute base level. What does kind of that evaluation look like? And you know, for a lot of the clients that I work with, it looks like a little bit of a handholding process, right? They don't understand what these financial statements are and they don't even have them, right? So if you're, if you're operating a business and you're wanting to grow, get some type of bookkeeper, some type of QuickBooks solution in place so that you're actually tracking um, the, the, the transactions that are happening inside of your business. If you're small, uh, if you're doing under $100,000, you can maybe do it in Excel, if you're doing more than a hundred thousand, that's where you really start to need kind of an accounting software. Uh, it's, it's typically my recommendation. So first off, get some get some data at least in front of you, right? The next step is to pull these financial statements, right? You can simply go and look in the reports or ask your bookkeeper or accountant or whoever's working for you. Hey, I need the balance sheet, the income statement, and the statement of cash flows, right? <clears throat> Take some time once a week to evaluate these, right? 8 a.m. Monday morning, that's the time you're going to do. We're going to actually work on the business, not inside of the business. We're going to clear our schedule. We are going to have these pages either pulled up on our computer or printed out for us. And we're going to start kind of walking through it. Okay, we're going to look at our balance sheet first. How much cash do we have? All right, that's going to be one of the first questions. And then how much cash do we need? Okay, if we need, you know, 25,000 bucks, what's it going to take for us? We have five right now. What's it going to take to us to get to 25, right? Hey, we need a new vehicle, right? Ours are kind of getting decrepit. What's that going to look like? Do we need to go get some, go get a loan from somebody? Do we need to start talking to the dealership? Um, what is that? Do we have outstanding receivables uh, from our clients? How are we going to go collect those, right? If you're just sitting there and, and never taking the time to think about some of these things, you can't see some of the glaring holes inside of your business um, that could be staring right at you on the form of these pieces of paper. So that's kind of the first thing on the balance sheet too. You know, you can maybe look at where, you know, if you do have any debt, how much do I owe? Where's my credit card at? Do I have some vendors that need to get paid? Those would be the nitty gritty things I would start to look at where you're probably going to spend 75 to 90% of your time next is on your income statement. 
again, your income statements over a period of time, if you're going to sit down and, and evaluate this, I would recommend to look at it either on a, a week by week basis for that prior month or, you know, prior month to wherever today is, or I would look at it from a year to date standpoint, right? So if we're at, you know, the middle of uh, September, I would probably look at it from January through, you know, September 14th, right? And I would look at it on a month by month basis and I would start to evaluate. I'd just go line by line. Okay, fuel's up the last three months. Why is fuel up? Well, gas prices have been going up, right? Okay, that makes sense to me. All right, sales are down. Well, what the heck are sales down? Well, when you've spent $1,000 less a month on advertising, advertising probably helps a ton in us getting sales, right? And so you can start to, when you start to actually take some time and look at where those numbers are kind of sitting at, you go, oh, crap, we could be doing this a lot better. Or, wow, we're doing really, really good at this. How do we do even better at it, right? How do we keep this machine kind of rolling through a really good time of the year, right? Luke, do you got anything to kind of add to any of that? You know, that's a good point is to, you know, understand this is this is how you make good business decisions, right? Follow the money. Do what yeah. the money says is best. And, you know, you're right. If, if, you, if you're stopping advertising, you know, and all of a sudden your, your sales calls, you know, the phone's not ringing. I mean, that's a, that's a really easy example. Um, I, I know yesterday or a couple days ago, I was in a group and, you know, I always like to initiate um, uh, financial conversations based around what we do as contractors. And I know you, you might not be familiar, but if you wanted to level or flatten a floor, there's primarily two, two main ways we do this in our trade. And one would be called dry pack. You know, it's, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a more, it's cement and, and basically sand. And, yep. and it's really dry and you just tamper it and you can make the floor perfectly level and flat. Uh, mm -hmm. It's, it's labor intensive materials are cheap. The second way is called a self leveling pour where it's a hybrid. You mix it up real wet, almost like a, like a soup, like a tomato yep. soup. And then it, it basically, um, it, it doesn't actually self level, which is kind of funny, but you, you can manipulate it around a little bit with a rolling pin. And, yep. and, it, and it will self-level with a little bit of encouragement. And um, this one is, uh, I would say, less labor intensive, uh, but the materials are sky high. Now, you can make money at both, and it's best yep. to know both methods, but it's best, and, and my answer, you know, a lot of people, I said, which one would you prefer and why? Or which one would you choose and why? And most people who knew dry pack, they said, well, dry pack every time, you know? And then, and then they said, because it's better, you know? And then the people right. who knew the, the new school, they said the new school way, because it's better, it's new. And I said, you're both wrong. You know, yeah. the, the thing that you wanna do is, first of all, learn both methods. And then second of all, run a cast, a cost analyst of, you know, which mm -hmm. method is going to, you know, and there's other things, obviously, you know, some height considerations and other things, but if yeah. you could do one or the other, run the cost analyst and figure it out, you know? Yeah. You're hitting on one of my favorite things to ask business owners. And I maybe have brought it up on this podcast before. Um, but I always love to ask like, so Luke, I would sit down and go, Luke, how's it going, man? How's your business doing? And you would come to me and you go, Drake, we're doing good. And I'd say, based on what? <laughs> right? If you're not looking at your, what are you basing good off of? Right? You could just, hey, we got jobs flown in. Okay, let's let's talk about that. What does deal flow look like? Hey, profit's really strong, right? That would be a reason business is going well. Uh, sales are really good, right? But if you don't have anything in front of you to kind of answer that, this is where you can start, right? Mm -hmm. Start tracking some of these, start evaluating. If you are the kind of guy that just goes good and you have no reason as to what good is, um, start to understand what makes our good, right? Is $100,000 a year in profit good? Is a million dollars in sales good? Is hitting my goal of trying to grow 10% from last year good? That's really where you can give a good answer on that. Most business owners just go, it's good because it's part of kind of our general dialogue and conversation. But the main point we're trying to hammer home here is if you want to actually grow a business, evaluation is 100% necessary mm -hmm. in helping you scale. And if you're not taking the time to get good information in front of you and then making decisions off of it, you're just going to be the guy that things are going good. Yeah, it's kind of our human nature just to say, you know, we're good, even if we're terrible, right? Even if yes. we're lousy. 
but it, you know, and you might choose to do that in the store or whatever, you know, it's kind of just yep. courtesy, but there's a few people in life that you should never do that to your, your significant other, your, your, you know, your financial advisor, you know, don't tell them you're good. If you having financial stress, your attorney, <laughs> you know, don't tell them you're good. If you're having, you know, uh, business stress and some, you know, things of that nature. So there's a yep. definitely a time and a place and, you know, I'll, I'll just add on here just for fun. The other day I was having a bad day and I, a neighbor I talked to once in a while I had at that point, I didn't even know his name but I just say, hi, he said, how are you doing? And you know, for whatever reason, I didn't do the normal thing. And I said, I'm actually having a really bad day. And he stopped and he talked to me for about five minutes. And in the end I hugged him and you know, I, I went, I went on my way feeling so much better about everything, you know, just right. that human connection, you know, just, it was only five minutes, you know, yeah. and, um, it's just, it doesn't have anything to do with finances, but more of a human story. For sure. For sure. No. And, I, and that's, and that's some of like, that's business, right? Business isn't just this, like in a nutshell thing, it affects large portions of probably the 90% of our life. You know, it, it has a gigantic impact on who we are as people. Um, and so I think that's a great point to say, Hey, good. Isn't just how we evaluate our businesses. It's let's look at our lives. Right. Cause that's really important. You know, if yeah. we want to grow our business, a lot of times people say, I want more time back. I want to spend more time with my family. Right. And, and, these are some of those steps that can help achieve those ultimate goals. And if you are trying to scale and grow, um, you know, I always tell everybody, you know, if you're trying to lose weight, you don't go talk to the guy that weighs 400 pounds. You talk to the guy that's fit and has a six pack and is in the gym every day, right? right. If you're trying to grow your business, you don't listen to what your buddies say that kind of have a failing business or just own their job. You're, you're, you follow what successful businesses do successful businesses evaluate their numbers. They have answers when there's discrepancies and they take time to focus on the business, not just on the actual day-to-day -day job. Yeah, absolutely. So I know these aren't always the most sexy conversations when we're talking about these financial statements. And, you know, it's not like this quick get rich quick scheme that people love to talk about on TikTok and things like that. What we're trying to just help you guys do is just real practical advice, right? Yeah. Let's lay it out simply. Here's what they are. Um, Cause I'd love to help every single one of you guys make as much money as you possibly can and run super successful businesses, but I can't pull you to do it, right? This is something that you guys have to take on on yourselves and, and kind of carry this weight, choose to make some of these decisions. Um, we can just help. Here's kind of the map to where you can get to the oasis, right? If you're a camel that's trying to drink in the middle of the desert, we'll show you the map. You can choose to follow it or not. So ultimately, we're not trying to be boring and talk about boring financial statements. We're trying to make this stuff fun and interactive and really show you the long term benefits of why taking time and, and reviewing these things and actually thinking about your business is going to pay out such huge, div huge dividends later for you. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, this has been a great series, um, Drake. I really appreciate you taking the time. And we did choose to keep these shorter, you know, to make them more digestible. We could have crammed all this yep. into a 40 minute episode, but you know, four, 10 minutes is a lot more digestible. So thank you for that's for, that's for sure. Man. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, listen, if you are in need, if you want to have a phone conversation with Drake, go to the link in the show notes, you know, performance financial LLC.com tell them tile money sent you, you know, tell them about your business. See if you're a, a good fit. I don't think you charge for a consultation, right? Nope. Free 30 minute uh, zoom call. So we'll Perfect. help walk you through anything. Perfect. All right. Tile friends. Well, you heard it there. Uh, check out Drake, Drake, uh, Vent Hall with, uh, performance financials. And, uh, we'll talk to you next week. You know, we'll have another hump day financials next Wednesday. And, uh, you know, we'll let you know what the subject is when we get there. Appreciate right, it. Friends. Take it easy.